It's a blessing to have this time with you for the word of encouragement here on this Tuesday. And I'd like to go to the perspective of John the Baptist. John the Baptist had the power of God upon him, and he had that ministry of preparing the way for the Lord Jesus. And during that time, he had great power. People were amazed, and everyone knew that he was a prophet. But he kept in mind the purpose for his ministry. It was not about him. It was not about promoting his own agenda. It was all about being the one to tell people that this is the time that the prophets have foretold of the Messiah. And as he's speaking to those that have come up to him and are asking uh, questions of, he, of him, he says in verse 28 of chapter 3 of Matthew, I'm sorry, John, ye yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. He makes it very clear, I'm not the Messiah. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy therefore is fulfilled. And what was his joy? And this is a statement we all know. He must increase, speaking of Jesus, but I must decrease. This needs to be the heart that we have. It doesn't matter how long we've been saved and how many victories that we've had. There's going to be a battle every day and choices made in regard to self. Our whole being, our flesh is centered around self. And that's what happened when we fell. Thank the Lord we have uh, a regenerated spirit if we're saved and we have the spirit of God to enable us. But when we just respond naturally, it's going to be about us. And it's a far greater problem than we know. And by the way, that's where we get discouraged. That's where we get fearful. That's where darkness comes in our life, when we are tr not truly walking with the Lord. And I think it's very interesting that John the Baptist here speaks a truth that really is for all of us when we have this kind of attitude. He said, I'm just the friend of the group and I am here to announce his coming. And he says that his joy then, the way he has blessing, the way he has fulfilled, this my joy therefore is fulfilled, is with this perspective. He must increase, I must decrease. I must live for him and not for self. Every time we make that decision where Christ is put first, and our purpose in life is to show forth his glory and to speak forth his truth. That's when joy and encouragement come. Oh, if we get to thinking about what's happening uh, in our world today, and I think about four years ago when we started to now, it really has uh, gotten worse and worse. If we get to thinking about that too much, we can get very down, but that's actually selfishness. We're looking at our own uh, frustrations. But oh, when we're thinking about Jesus and we want him to increase and we're living for him, then that's how our joy is fulfilled, that he increases and that we decrease. That's why we have trials. That's why God deals with us. That's why he convicts us, to show us ourself. And as he gives us victory over self, then we are able to magnify him. And I'm telling you, you'll be encouraged. That's when the joy of the Lord will be your strength.